Welcome to Models of Integrity, a new video documentary by Luke Sterile Leadership Foundation. I am Father George Ehusani, the Executive Director. We have produced this documentary, Nigeria, Models of Integrity, to showcase good, upright Nigerians who are struggling to live lives of integrity in the midst of what some people consider a rotten environment. An environment where every day we are bombarded with news of monumental corruption. Corruption at the lowest levels, corruption at the highest levels. Young people are today assaulted with scandals of their leaders or ex-leaders. Scandals related to indiscipline, to corruption, to impunity. In that environment, we want to demonstrate that there are examples of virtue. There are examples of integrity. There are examples of people who have lived their life and have continued to live their life by principles. People of character. People who know that righteousness exalts a nation, but that sin is a reproach. We have many such people, from left to, to, to right, from north to south, from east to west, Igbos and Yorubas and Hausas and TV and Ishekiri and Ibira, we have good Nigerians, exemplary Nigerians, models of integrity, but they have not been well celebrated. They have not been given recognition. Luke Sterile Leadership Foundation has begun a series to showcase Nigerians that are struggling, that are working hard, not without sacrifice, not without persecution sometimes, to live by truth, by justice, by honesty, to work hard and earn, only earn an honest living and touch no resource that is not their own, that they have not worked for. We have many such Nigerians. We want to be showing this to our young people in order to give our young people hope that all is not lost. Everyone is not rotten. We want to give our primary school young people, secondary school young people, our students in the universities, young graduates, let them know that all hope is not lost, that Nigeria can be redeemed, especially because we have these shining lights. We have these beacons of light in every profession, in every sector, Christians and Muslims who are using their Christian religion and their Muslim religion to live lives of integrity as nurses, as teachers, as uh, administrators, as civil servants, as corporate executives. They are using the best moral principles of their Christian faith or Islamic faith to live lives of integrity and we want our young people to emulate them. These are the people we call models of integrity. I am grateful to the Makato Foundation that supports the production and the free distribution of this uh, uh, documentary and it is uh, part of the projects that Luxterra has been running along with other people to promote integrity in our society. In the last few years, we have produced booklets like this, Christianity and the Challenge of Corruption in Nigeria. Christianity and the Challenge of Corruption in Nigeria, showing all the scriptural texts and commentaries where every act of corruption we practice in this country, everyone is abhorred and condemned. Also, we produced Islam and the Challenge of Corruption in Nigeria, showing texts from the Hadith, texts from the Quran, texts from Islamic scholars that condemn all acts of corruption. We even produce a curriculum and facilitators manual, a curriculum and facilitators guide to teach people how to use their religions to promote integrity and to fight corruption. Finally, we produce an integrity pledge a pledge that everyone that comes for our courses, our training programs at Luxterra, takes this pledge at the end of the uh, course in order to live lives of integrity and we make them ambassadors of integrity. So, the Models of Integrity documentary that you're about to watch is just one uh, amidst a whole gamut of programs to promote integrity in our society and teach people to take leadership role uh, may the Lord use this documentary and several other productions like this that are coming up to transform our society, to give hope to young people, to make our country a better place that all of us will love to leave behind 
a good legacy, a legacy of justice and peace and integrity that we would like to leave for our children and children's children. God bless you. In his book, Combating Corruption at the Grassroots Level in Nigeria, founder and executive director of the Association of Nigerians Against Corruption, ANAC, Professor Funsho Oluiton says, In order for any nation to reduce corruption, it must be attacked simultaneously at all levels. Combating corruption at the grassroots level is one route to take, and perhaps literally the most fundamental. Professor Oluiton has over the years continued the fight on corruption within the capacity of ANAC. This is against the backdrop of continuing Transparency International reports rating Nigeria as one of the most corrupt countries of the world. Young Oluiton made a rather dramatic entry into the anti-corruption fight. A cashier with the defunct Electricity Corporation of Nigeria, ECN, which became NEPA, and was later unbundled into transmission and distribution companies, was demanding a shilling from each customer who came to pay their bill, a chore Oluiton performed for his father almost on a monthly basis. The fair-minded and transparent young man got himself enrolled with a Lagos-based non-government organization campaigning against corruption, Nigeria League of Bribes Corner. And on his next trip to pay the electricity bill, tendered a membership ID card issued by the League. The cashier knew his one shilling bribe engagement had run into a solid wall. I put the, the, the bill on his front and he turned his head to me to go and sit down. I said no. I pulled out my ID card and I said I'm a member of the Nigerian League of Bribes Corner. He looked at it, he opened his eyes, immediately he got my bill, I paid, and I left. Month by month, he never delayed me again. That was one corrupt official told to his face that he couldn't dangle vice and get away with it all the time. Professor Oluiton is a man of integrity, and worthy of note is the place of religion and creed in the metamorphosis of the executive director of ANAC. The fact that it was during a discussion on transparency in a religious knowledge class that he was told how to handle the corrupt cashier is clearly instructive. And even when he got to the Nigerian League of Bribes Corner in Lagos, that adherence to creed was still a strong factor since he was made to commit himself by taking an oath for an impeccable anti-corruption service on the Bible. Many years on, a class of students at Amadubello University, whom he told the story of the corrupt ECN cashier, felt that the Nigerian League of Bribes Corner deserved a comeback. That was how the Association of Nigerians Against Corruption, ANAC, came into existence. But that's the easy part. The septuagenarian crusader against corruption has encountered many challenges as he battled corruption and promoted integrity. As a newspaper reporter, he made do with a salary of £18, 10 shillings at a time his colleagues in the customs department were taking home between £50 and £100 every week. So he didn't shun corruption because of a well-paid job. Later in life, he actually had to resign his post a few times because he stood up stoutly against vice, to the annoyance of some of his colleagues in the office. Returning to the place of creed in all of this, Oluiton is a Christian. He readily expresses gratitude to his parents for raising him in the fear of God. Professor Oluiton is reaching out to the younger generation in a robust effort at making integrity a pattern of life for any nation that desires true progress. The best way is to address 
the youths wherever you can find them. And that is what I'm doing for the past many years, since 1984. Starting this at Amadebele University, that's a group of youths. And later on in life, we organize seminars for student leaders in universities. If you go on my website, www.anakhq.org, you will see several pictures of where I was addressing the youths, either at the university, either at the camp of uh, uh, youth corpus, either at the primary school level, either in a church with the youths, either in a mosque. These are all the pictures you will find. Either on the street of Abuja, you will see my picture in front of the secretariat on the street of Abuja with a PA system calling on people to come and join my vanguard. And what is his advice to those who still believe in a life of integrity in a society that seems to play down the benefits of a virtuous life? There is no better way to success than the way of honesty, transparencies, which promotes your integrity. If you live a clean life, your life will be clean. If you live a dirty life, your life will be dirty. Therefore, as a youngster, from now, live a life of honesty. Oluiton's life story will remain a reference point in the search for men of good bearings. He is blessed with a wife and children who appreciate what he stands for. That admiration, of course, extends beyond the home front. And despite the challenges as a young man, talking about financial challenges, he encouraged me that hard work would definitely pay at some point. And you would definitely agree with me that it is something that you find very hard for young men as well as women to actually want to undertake. Why would you volunteer after all? You are spending your resources volunteering. What are you going to make out of volunteering? But I was able to take that advice and eventually start up my own media outfit, Rafael Uno Promotions. And ever since, I've been growing from leaves to bounds. What really challenged me is that he has never gone beyond his boundaries and he cut his coat according to his size. Nobody has never come to him or come to the family and tell us that he has done this, done this, he has cheated, he has, no. He, he, he's, 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 he's somebody that people should, somebody that people should look at. They should copy him, rather. It's a model. The Association of Nigerians Against Corruption, ANAC, continues its activities designed to reduce dishonesty in society. It is an effort that owes virtually all gratitude to anti-corruption icon, Professor Funsho Oluito. Wherever you find a place you do, you know that, 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 that place is killing. Alhaji Awal is not exaggerating. As Alhaji Saidu Datijo Adahama showed a media production crew around Adahama textiles and garments industries, the man's simple disposition to life and utter straightforwardness were practically palpable. The clean bill of behavioral health given to him by his childhood friend Alhaji Awal is a powerful oral testimonial for a truly honest man. Even the gentle facial expression of this icon of integrity gives you the instant impression of a man who is simple to the hilt. But since there's a saying that true greatness flows from humility, 
Alhaji Sayyidu's achievements could be seen as divine reward to a hard-working man who has lived a reasonably transparent life. Uh, I'm happy, um, I'm grateful to Allah that I come from a highly disciplined family and really of integrity. And I try to follow suit and try to stay fast in their teaching and guidance that I received from my mother and my father. I'm happy that I live with them for more than 50 years of my life. Uh, not quite long they passed away and they, tr they trained me to be honest, to be hardworking, to be straightforward in my dealing with everybody. Parents, earthly as they are, would do all they can to train up a child of good morals. But for al Haji Saidu, the ultimate pathfinder for the truly honest man is a life with a strong spiritual theme. Islam is a full religion that did not leave anything behind. And that's what influenced my parents to be what they told me on. It's, it's all, the basis are all Islam. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion that uh, uh, we, we, we take it a whole way of life. So my parents were Muslims and they trained me in, in an Islamic way. And I started with Islamic education and uh, Islamic education taught me to be honest. When this textile manufacturer set out to do business, he needed a label and found his family name attractive. But he couldn't pick it up just because he wanted to. His father, first of all, drew him aside and got him to make a pledge never to bring the family's name into disrepute. Only then was he allowed to include Adahama in his business name. Nothing good comes easy. The sweetness of honey entices its seeker, but to make it to the honeycomb, you just must encounter a few bees. al Haji Saidu held the chairmanship of Sabongari Market for many years. At that duty post, he met quite a number of challenges even as he committed himself to a life of integrity. Uh, and for one to resist, to resist the temptation of making money, yeah. it is not easy. And Alhamdulillah, I can say the guidance made me not to receive a kobo from anybody. None at all. None, not at all. And I am pleased to tell you that I can say, if I am not mistaken, I was challenged by several investigations after my office. People were surprised, were thinking that I've made money, were thinking that gave, government gave me a lot of money, uh, traders and businessmen gave me a lot of money, uh, and so many things rose at that time. And the, then the, governor, the government of, that, of the day then uh, co constituted uh, several investigations to prove, and perhaps with, with the intention of indicting me, there were five investigations, which I feel nobody in Kano ever passed through that kind of investigation. Administrative Commission of Inquiry, uh, Investigative Audit, Verification Committee, Fault Finding Committee, and then Judicial Commission of Inquiry. Five that I had to pass, and I passed them successfully without anybody coming to testify that he has even given, ever given me a call. Al Haji Saidu is happy that his children are putting up a strong showing against dishonesty. But while his lifestyle remains commendable, he emphasizes that not much would have been achieved in the absence of a godly upbringing. Here are a few comments from those who have interacted with Al Haji Saidu. Uh, you cannot choose your father, actually. You can't choose your mother. So, um, no matter how they are, you have to be proud of them. But for identifying them as one of the, of, uh, as an integrity person, I think it's, some, it's an honor and privilege to me to be uh, his son. Uh, the relationship is so deep, so long. Since childhood, he's one of integrity. Since childhood, he, is, he, is, he distinguished himself 
with sincerity and honesty of attitude. Wherever you finalize Edu, you know that, 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 that place is clean. Al Haji Saidu has come, seen, and conquered many of the obstacles to a life of integrity. He remains happy about the path he has chosen in life. Those that take upon themselves the business of bringing up the child have a duty to be a direct example of those qualities they desire to inculcate in the growing child, young man or woman. One of such qualities is integrity. My name is Caroline Yakubu. I'm married. I'm blessed with um, three lovely daughters, two granddaughters. I'm a teacher by training and um, I'm passionate about what I do as a teacher and passionate too about God. Notable educationist Mrs. Caroline Yakubu is a woman of integrity. She is the executive secretary of Africa Community School Asukuru Abuja and the job of training up children to be God-fearing and well-behaved is an assignment that has become her creed. I just need you to believe and act and conduct yourselves. Don't depart from truth and honesty because I know whoever tells the truth and walks in honesty, God always takes care of that person. Good circumstance could be said to have played a part in Mrs. Yakubu's life of transparency. Her father was a lay reader in the Anglican Church, and raising his children in the fear of God was simply non-negotiable. For some persons, circumstances would always alter cases, so they suit behavior to what the situation demands. Mrs. Yakubu addresses the issue of whether integrity is an attitude that can be switched on and off in the face of so-called trying times. The individual in question is central in her response. In a way, I will say yes and no. Um, but for me, the environment may not necessarily define or decide how one behaves. What is important is about who you are and what you believe that you are and doing it, whether the environment permits you or not. As long as you know what you are doing, you are persuaded, you just go ahead and do it. Mrs. Yakubu is a teacher of passion. It's a statement that sounds regular since many individuals readily adopt such characterization for their disposition to their chosen fields. But the sincerity of Mrs. Yakubu's claims come robustly to the fore when she recounts how she started Africa Community School. It's a tale of doggedness. Mrs. Yakubu had the courage of her convictions. Sixteen years on, Mrs. Caroline Yakubu is unflinchingly treading her chosen path. Many parents chose the school due to her stance. At this point, it is pertinent to delve into what developed Mrs. Yakubu's kind of personality. She traces it all to the path chosen by her parents, who themselves believed in the place of godliness in nurturing the child. I, like I said, I grew up in the church. We were meant to go to church. I was in the children's choir. I we learned the Apostles' Creed. We did everything as an Anglican. I got confirmed in the Anglican Church. 
There is more to Mrs. Yakubu's story of a life nurtured in a Christian upbringing, which has actually rubbed off on her own children. Her three daughters are good Christians. Caroline Yakubu long ago took a motto for Africa Community School, which gives you a hint of what transpires on those premises, knowledge in the fear of God. Like I said, I grew up in the church. However, when I got to the secondary school, I rededicated my life to Christ way back in 1979. And since then, I have been involved in various fellowship groups. And uh, I will say that my life is only getting better as a result of my personal encounter with the Lord. That fear of God manifests itself in many ways at Mrs. Yakubu's school. But suffice to say that if you take corruption or any form of inducement to the school, you are virtually embarking on Mission Impossible. Good would always seek after good. Mrs. Yakubu's advice to those who want to, against all odds, say no to issues that tend to lower integrity is for them to seek spiritual help on matters that seem impossible to man. The life of integrity is not a struggle. It takes God's grace. Once you just surrender to the Lord, tap into His grace, He gives you all that you need to live the life of integrity. Naturally, Mrs. Yakubu is a positive influence on the lives of others. Mrs. Caroline Yakubu is my mother, the first woman I look up to on how to behave as a woman. Uh, as a little girl growing up, I wanted to be like her. I liked her character, I liked the way she talked to people, I liked the fact that um, she was honest in her dealings with people. So, it's the path of the eagle for the Executive Secretary of Africa Community School and Africa International College, Abuja. The Director General of Islamic Education Trust, IET, Alhaji Arzika Abubakar Rimo, has every reason to look back on his life and thank Providence for the journey so far. We're talking about a man who simply has lived out the saying that it is good to be good. And it has resulted from living by faith and example. He runs a trust whose impact is comparatively huge given the fact that it is an organization that caters to the educational needs of a teeming number of Muslims in Nigeria. Well, for me, integrity means adhering to the rules or laws uh, set up by, say, a family, organization, institutions, government. And as a whole, the creator. To understand how selfless Alhaji Arzika's service to humanity has been, he was born in Rimo, Kebi State, Nigeria, but has spent 39 years of his life in another state, Niger, all in the desire to keep contributing to human development. Alhaji Arzika's post requires him to take care of activities both at the headquarters and the branches of the trust, as well as oversee sister organizations within and outside Nigeria. Taking up on how integrity has played out in his experience, he picks the workplace, and curiously enough, his place of passion, the farm, to disapprove of behaviors that negate the virtue of integrity. Let's take fulfilling promises or pledges. Okay. An employee signed a letter of contract of employment where he or she has been asked or informed the working periods are 8, for example, to 4 p.m. Okay. 
So therefore, you find, for example, in this organization, sometimes there are some staff when you after employment, yes, they read that, but in complying with that, hmm. some of them were very careless. They don't respect that. That dis disrespect to the uh, pledge is the opposite of integrity. It is easy to talk generally about what one expects from other people concerning examples of integrity. But when an interviewer finds the respondent using his own son to explain how he insisted on integrity, you begin to wonder whether anyone could be more forthright. I didn't know what happened, but finally when he was supposed to come back home and give me a certificate, he came to tell me has been withdrawn. Hmm. Since when? Said last uh, last year. What happened? So when I, we inquired, found that yes, because he was feeling high that yes, he knows it. So he was caught in uh, helping somebody in exam. Oh. It's his classmate. When the committee asked him to come and uh, attend an interview, he refused. But the other person went. They called him first, uh, once, twice, thrice. He didn't come, so they said, look, it means you're not interested. So they recommend dismissing him. So when he came back home, he, tell, he told me that, said, but why didn't you tell me you had a problem since that time? And tell, didn't tell anybody. Okay, now as a child of the family, you know, I've been sponsoring children for you. I have already paid your uh, sponsorship up to your uh, OND diploma. So I have finished with that one. I will not repeat that sponsorship. But when you get your admission to go to and you do your study in university, I will continue. Mm. What would you like to do? said I would like to do uh, business. I said, not here in the city. If you want to do business, go to the village. Start there. When you know how to do business uh, in the villages, then you come into the urban area. Wow. He went there, he tried, tried. Finally, he said, he need capital. I, said, I can't give you capital for business. But I have a farm. You can go and uh, do casual labor or daily labor. I will pay you. I will get your money for capital, then you. Then he worked on my farm for one year, then I paid him. That's what he started the business with. There is no doubt, after that experience, father and son developed more respect for each other. But behaviorists would give anything to have the likes of al Haji Arzika advise others on how to pursue a virtuous life in a situation where not a few persons would settle for, if you can't beat them, you join them. Consistency in doing the right every time, everywhere yeah. will solve the problem. And whatever one suffers as a result of that, let him donate that to the cause of living together. Mm. Whether he or she believes in God or not, mm. but for living together. Mm. Any person or creature you see, no matter how different you are with him, mm. It's helping you, you are helping him. Observer comments are inevitable when you x-ray the life of Alhaji Arzika. 70 to 80 percent of our financial needs are from donors. And uh, if they donate, we all know what happens in Nigeria. If they not don't donate and they don't see the effect of what they donated tomorrow, they won't again. And you can see from what we have on the premises here, we are always making progress. And it's because we've been able to exhibit our integrity, part of which is our own personal integrity, that of Alaji Azika, mm -hmm. to be worried. Considering his integrity and accountability, with the little experience I have working with him, he is somebody that wants clean accounts. Alhaji Azika has planted integrity in his home and official interactions. Little wonder he is reaping appreciation at this point of his life.
Born 73 years ago, Diokpa Patrick Anyameluho started school in Asaba, capital of present-day Delta State in Nigeria. Eventually, tertiary education took him through the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, as well as the University of East Anglia, Norwich. He was a pioneer in the Nigerian Youth Service Scheme in 1973 and 74, where he served at the Chemical Laboratory in Kanu. He would eventually spend 16 years in the public service. He eventually left the civil service to establish Alpha Chemicon Company, where he operated some of the best practices any business can boast of. Given his exemplary attitude, the question was put to him whether being a man or woman of integrity is the uphill task many individuals portray it as. Uh, want to make it easy in terms of money. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to pursue your profession, like especially in this sort of thing we're doing, uh, I will tell you that even up to today, I'm still funding the laboratory. Diokpa Anyameluho was asked to give a definition of integrity from his own perspective. He addresses the interviewer personally to make his point. If I call here, I can imagine in my head, you know, what Inya can do, mm -hmm. what she cannot do, mm -hmm. you know. So if you call my name, you can imagine you are. That's, that is what we are praying that Nigeria will evolve to, that everybody will have a character of integrity, a character of, you say one thing, that is what you are known for. In total recognition of the professional relevance of Diokpa Anyameluho, his company, Alpha Chemicon, was one of those which government designated public analyst to complement efforts in Food and Drug Administration. In the course of doing his job as a chemist, were there instances when he had to stand? Uh, you could be offered money, hmm. you know, uh, to get something passed on. Hmm. Even what we are doing now, you know, is as simple as, uh, just write a certificate for me. You've been told that? Yeah, or several times. All I need is certificate, you know, to send to NAPDA to do this, to do this. I said, no, I, I cannot append my signature in what I have not analyzed. Yeah. It's not possible. I must make sure this sample you have bringing to me has passed yeah. the test, has, the result is okay before I sign. When you are in a position to influence appointments or employment for persons as close to you as your children, and you still tell them to go and compete with others, you are living the life of Diokpa Patrick Anyameluho. But why would he adopt such a strict mode of existence? I look at everybody without the humanity of we are all the same before God. Right. And if there is a job, the vacancy out there, mm. you know, all my children should compete with the, everybody. And it is the best that should be selected. Mm. You know, it's, I should not influence anything. It's, if she's the best, let her be selected. Mm. You know, uh, if uh, another person is better than her, let her work harder next time. Mm to be the best. The uncompromising insistence on propriety extends to the fuel pump where Diokpa Patrick Anyameluho says fairness must be extended to customers equally. He dispenses fuel to close friends and relatives very early in the morning, but as soon as the official time starts, not even his wife would get the preferential treatment. Everyone joins the queue. And of course, there's never the question of selling fuel above the official pump price. It was hardly possible for the God element to be missing from Diokpa Anyameluho's life of all striking integrity. He says the individual has a duty to do that which is right. The grace of God would finish the job. Besides, leadership should be by example. 
if the people that are looking up are not doing it. But my advice is whether you don't look up to anybody. Mm. The Bible said the human being is not our source of inspiration. We look up to God, we look up to Christ. And buy and learn. You know, because if you look up to a human being, you may be disappointed. You cannot do it right. Mm. You must look up to something higher than a human being. And those who work or associate with Diopa Anyamelo Ho are witnesses to the path of this man of honor. He's a person that I, I love to work with. If you are not sincere, don't come near to him. If you are not hardworking, don't come near him. If you are the person that you, you don't want to be serious in life, you are not going to be his friend. He's a, he's a man that has fear of God. And um, everything he, do, he does, I want to put God first. Um, anybody that um, wants to relate with him must be somebody that fears God because he doesn't want to compromise or would like to bend. Diopa Anyameluho continues to live his life, and a virtuous one it is. It is not clear whether Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria's staffer, Josephine Ugu, is conversant with the saying, virtue rewards itself. But the happiness which accompanies her recall of each of the instances when she discovered money during her chores as a cleaner at the airport suggests an individual who is happy with herself and the grace that has created an impeccably honest woman in her person. Her story cannot be one that has resulted from her having enough materially. Mrs. Ugu is indeed a woman of very humble circumstance, yet she is today one of the first Nigerians that can speak of a personal life of honesty. Her story has gone viral on the internet. Mrs. Ugu links it all to a prediction by her church pastor to the effect that she was going to come to real grace by her acts. She did not quite doubt her pastor at the time of prophecy, but like the biblical laughter by Sarah when she was told she would have a child at an old age, Mrs. Ugu knew her own circumstance and her membership of a society where you get known more when you are a man or woman of means. But Providence never asks for permission when it strides into the lives of men and women to make a point. Josephine started the series of recovery of misplaced amounts of money at the Lagos airport. We are, was in service. My pastor is preaching. After he preached, he, he meet me. He said, Josephine, God said, I should told you that uh, the whole world will hear your name. He go back again. He said it the second time. The, the God said that the whole world will hear your name, Josephine. I said, me. It's okay. The third one, he said it, Josephine. God said, I should tell you that the whole world will hear your name. So the, after that one anointing, I couldn't even know the place in short. I, I fall down. I break almost uh, two chairs or three. So I claim it. So after three days, the, the blessing manifests. While Josephine's video continues to be viral on the internet, one question remains a puzzle to many persons who know her story. 
what has been the motivation behind these returns of monies that could have clearly improved her material status had she chosen to keep them? Wonka, the boot is open. I will just people, I see that uh, Ghana must go there even though it's open. As Naira, Nigeria money is full with the bag. I, I look, look front, look back. I know in airport to the touch is almost there. Of all the monies she recovered, only $50 was given to her once by an appreciative foreigner. Josephine Ugu is able to do what she has done severally because of her deep attachment to a spiritual life. But not everyone is happy with her for not keeping some of the monies she recovered. They considered she needed some nicing up, so to speak. But they could well have been talking to themselves as far as this airport worker knew. Frank to a fault, Josephine Ugu admits that in one instance, she heard a voice that wanted her to keep some of the money. But the voice of God eventually conquered the evil luring. Josephine Ugu has some advice for individuals who might want to succumb to dishonesty. There's nothing not like sincerity. Honest is good. Whichever way you view it, Josephine has become an integrity icon of sorts at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport. She has proved to everyone that dishonesty does not necessarily result from want or not having enough. Honesty remains the best policy, and she is appreciated. We are monitored by so many people in our day-to-day -day life, but in the hustle and bustle that fuels living, we could think sometimes that we are completely on our own, unmonitored, and for some, on a loose rein that gives them the feeling of not needing to care about anything in the world. Well, when anyone who reasons this way crosses the path of diligent Nigerian investment banker and politician, Omar Bishir Baro, he is likely to be cautioned about leaving unsavory blemishes on the human trail. Omabi Shebaro was born in Lagos, Nigeria. He has engaged in academic activity that has shot him up to huge heights in terms of certificates taken from the endeavor. Barrow is the dream that powers sincere desires for a noble character. An interaction with this paragon of honesty is just a rewarding experience. Well, I think the simplest way to think about it is to say um, every time you make choices, are your choices the right thing? You know, can you do the right thing all the time, every time, whether people are looking at you or people are not looking at you? Will your actions pass what we call the newspaper? Of the sunshine test, that is, if people saw everything that you did, if cameras were on you 24 7, then those things that you do, would they pass that test? And so that's what integrity is always remembering that um, it's not about whether people can see you or whether people will catch you, mm -hmm. but it's just to imagine that. Imagine if eyes were on you, what would you do? And I think if we all thought about our conduct in this way, then I guess that we will all need lives of integrity. Barrow's sojourn in politics found him contesting in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, for a place in the Nigerian House of Representatives in the 2019 elections. Now, this should raise eyebrows for the simple reason that many Nigerians believe that if you want to engage in politics, you must first of all get crooked. How did he cope? I, mean, uh, I, I believe that one of the biggest problems we have with uh, politics is the amount of corruption or, or the, the, sometimes people don't even consider it corruption. Mm -hmm. They vote by um, influencing with small amounts of money and 
you know, rice and uh, seasoning chips yeah. and so on and so yeah. forth. And it's become the norm, you know. So throughout the campaign, we would go around campaigning, sharing ideas with groups of people. Uh, and you would find that even after you have laid out the best plans and manifesto, mm. all people are asking you at the end is, Honorable, what did you bring? Mm. So, and mm. they don't realize that that what did you bring, that the fact that the politician actually gives it to them is the problem with politics. The businessman and the politician in Ombabisha Baro just have to recognize one master whose dealings must pay heed to the dictates of integrity. The family usually plays a big part in creating the likes of Omabishe Baro. He affirms this, but ultimately identifies a spiritual upbringing as the greatest contributor to his life of integrity. Beyond the material, I'm a Christian and Catholic. I believe that there is life after this world. I believe in the deep spiritual values and principles of my faith. I believe that even if corruption seemed like the only way I could put food on the table for my family, I believe that that is an affront to who God is. Mm. Because the way we are doing corruption in Nigeria, the worship of money, it's really idolatry. You know, people will tell you that the only reason why I'm corrupt is because how else will I eat? And I say to them very simply, so who, who gave you the food? The job you have, the opportunities you have. Was it money that gave me to do, or was it God who gave me to do? So, yeah, certainly, my faith plays a major role in, in you know, helping me to cope. Many integrity icons spread the message of a life of truth and fairness to their children, besides making sure that their health and general well being are taken good care of. Omabishe Baro does exactly that, but then goes the extra mile by catering to the needs of persons outside his family. That the politician then feels that, you know what, I have paid for you, I have settled you. In fact, the, the typical politician doesn't even show up. He sends his agents, his merchants of politics, as I like to describe them, to do this sharing on his behalf. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And people don't really think through it till the end. Exactly. I have many times had to sit with people where they are talking about amounts of money, and I say, okay, so if I have to give each of you in this community, for example, 500 naira, and you multiply that by 10,000 people in the community, and that's one community, and that's maybe 5 billion naira, and there are like 100 other communities, and that's maybe another 500 billion naira. Have you ever thought that if an ordinary politician running for the House of Representatives could dig up half a billion naira just to use as sharing money for people on the streets? Where do you think he's going to get? What do you think he's going to do when he gets into the house of reps? Barrow tells young people that it is still good to be good. They should start out towards a noble life by redefining success correctly. And in the background is the voice of a grateful woman for meeting the personality called Omabishe Barrow. Mrs. Kemi Barrow cannot hold back the delight from having a husband she's proud of. Omabishe. Barrow lives the life of integrity. He, he breathes in and out integrity. Uh, for as long as I've known Omar Shea Barrow, which is almost 19 years now, he's not changed. From the moment we started dating till this moment, Omar Shea Barrow is a very principled man. What he says is what it is. Kemi Barrow got hit by, so to speak, the positive cyclone Omabisha Baro has become to so many people. 19 years and counting, and Mrs. Baro is still full of gratitude for meeting a man she simply calls Bishe. He has rubbed up on, on me completely. Um, I share with him everything he shares. I believe in everything he does. Most importantly, Bishe Baro determines what is right and wrong. His moral values are very high, so and he applies that into everything he does. Barrow's company once bidded for a job. When it boils down to needing to show appreciation to those who were giving it, he simply asked his colleague at work to tell them to keep it. The staffer in question practically thought he didn't hear his principal right. When I called the client and said, sorry, we do not give feedback to my office. 
although the client threatened that we will not do business with them, I would say that um, three years down the line, we're still in business with that client. So I'm glad that I stood with him. I gave him the benefit of doubt. I believed in him and I have walked into offices here in Nigeria and I have told people bluntly to their faces that we do not give bribes. It's been a short account of the life of Omar Bishe Barrow. It's a route he remains grateful to ply. Men and women of creed, whatever their religion is, tend to have a common bond. They harp on the fine points of life and living, and religiously stick to the courage of their convictions on integrity. Niger State, Nigeria, should be grateful for having such an individual in its bureaucracy. My name is Aladi Idris Osman Issa. I was born on 21st May 1956 to the family of Aladi Osman. Isa, popularly known as Medaria. Al Haji Idris started formal education at Ireti Primary School, Ikoyi, Lagos. Still in pursuit of education, he returned to Bidda, Niger State, in 1966 due to the political upheaval in the country. In 1978, he graduated from Amadubello University, Zaria, with a Bachelor of Arts in History and Political Science. His work life started proper in the Niger State Civil Service as an administrative officer. He acted as permanent secretary at two different ministries in the state. Office politics kept him away from confirmation as a substantive permanent secretary until retirement. He recalls a profound act of integrity in those years in service. Well, I was in one ministry and the boys, my peers, they, were, they wanted to cheat the government. They forged my signature, wanted to, so that's why they can make away with about two million naira. But the bank officials realized the difference between my signature and their signature. And the, the, our attention was drawn to it. Wow. So, and uh, I pleaded with my, those who are my seniors then to just let, to forgive them. And I, I cautioned them against such my practices and uh, advise them to study hard rather than pilfer government funds. Mm -hmm. And one and one of them became a graduate later and he was highly grateful to for my counseling. Once an anti corruption fighter, always a crusader against vice. It wasn't long before Al Haji Idris had the opportunity to prove his integrity again. I was made a a secretary to a security committee to address security problems as they crop up in Niger State and, uh, and also a co-signatory to the account. But when my boss presented two checks or so, the first check he presented, I signed. When he, then he brought another one, I said, no, this is not how to go about it. There is need for proper documentation exactly. so that because we are all we can we don't know when we'll die let them whatever whatever we do let it be documented so that whoever takes over we know that the money given to us mm -hmm. was uh, spent wisely so and he was annoyed so he, he, he took me to the secretary to the state government although, although we did not meet him the peer was saying i should do uh, uh, seek for forgiveness from him. I said, no, how can I seek for forgiveness for uh, having done nothing? Mm. I can't seek mm. for any forgiveness. But when the governor was later informed, he he sided with me publicly. Mm. Later on, he told the secretary to the state government that this is uh, your man. He doesn't know where the wind is uh, blowing. Mm. So, mm. <laughs> that, that, that was what happened. Wow. And that even affected, I think, my confirmation as a permanent... Secretary. 
Al-Haji Idris was lucky that virtue was rewarded there, obviously with the blessing of the governor. But why would he act up to 18 months without being confirmed as a substantive permanent secretary? Because of my, my nature. <laughs> Because I refuse to, I refuse to bend, bend. I mean, to satisfy their wishes and mm. Mm. Uh, so that 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 was the reason. Not that I did anything bad per se, and they too know that I, I wasn't. I was not guilty. Also. Right. So, so, and um, I sat for for thirty five years, and uh, I thank God for the service I rendered. Mm. Because well, even if you go to any of the places that I serve now, and you ask for uh, you, you ask for me, they will willingly come and they will even defend me. Yeah. Al Haji Idris's steadfastness in his anti-corruption stance stems from his religious beliefs. The incorruptible civil servant is grateful for his Islamic upbringing. He acknowledges that this has played a big role in forming up his character. Going back to his civil service days. Al-Haji Idris's experience was such that after serving as permanent secretary for 18 months and wasn't confirmed, it didn't matter to him that he had to revert to the post of director. For him, God's time had to be the best. Al-Haji Idris is married with five children. He urges young persons to bid their time and assures them that a fat bone still gets to a patient dog. Whether he likes it or not, he will one day die. Mm. And God will request him to give account of his stewardship. Mm. And uh, one thing we should also bear in mind is that whatever God has destined for you yes. will not miss you. Whatever he has not destined for you will not you will not get it. Even if you it comes to even if it is in your, on your mouth, mm. it, it will you, you won't you won't enjoy it. Mm. But whatever God has planned for you, it will be yours. Nobody will prevent you from getting it. It's only fair to seek comments from someone who knows Al Haji Idris. That we thought that is a bit strict to some extent, not realizing that that's the way forward. Because you make sure that everything we do, we do it right. What is wrong, we left it aside. So, to some extent, even back in school, we make sure that. Um, we are that obedient, and once he says anything strange with us, we sort of don't even take him 30 seconds to start questioning where do you get it from, from who, from where, where are you taking it from. And we now start preaching to you that this life is nothing. Well, if you take it gradually, you might go somewhere. But once you try to rush it, before you know, you to lead you to certain things that will make you regret later in life. Al-Haji Idris can rest assured that a place is there for him in the Hall of Fame for men and women who shunned greed and stuck to character above everything else. Born in Funtua, Nigeria, some 50 years ago, Professor Usman Zunurain is a man that has simply stayed true to his belief in living a life of truth and honesty. After duly taking the primary and secondary school certificates, he studied law at the Bayer University, Kano, and was called to the bar on March 19, 1996. He started his PhD program in 2010. And out of diligence and hard work, Professor Zunarain is at the moment the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Bayero University, Kano. Professor Zunarain has a definition for integrity. A cherished value, I think, uh, that uh, people try to have some set of principles, you know, that may be dictated out of their ideological beliefs, out of their maybe religious beliefs. You know, purely you are trying to live uh, very, uh, you know, upright, upright, uh, you know, type of life. 
you want to lead a life which is uh, to the best of your ability, you know, according to the uh, set of values, principles, and, uh, and, uh, and, and other things that the community cherish and you also believe in. When asked to recall what challenges he has faced in living a life of transparency, Professor Zunurain recalls the case of a woman he gave her name as Mrs. Adepoju, who got a rough treatment from the family of her husband following his death. She was, according to Professor Zunurain, thrown out of the matrimonial home and left with nothing to fend for herself and the children. Professor Zunurain said he, at the time, vowed to support the woman any way he could to get the husband's money in the bank. Mrs. Adepoju's husband had died without a will. After a frustrating search through various bank accounts, Professor Zunurain said Locke eventually smiled on him. It was quite a frustrating experience. And uh, as we are moving around, one day we went to one very, you know, very remote village. You can't believe it in those days. I, I got about one point something million naira in the account, which was a huge amount of money there. So we collected the money and, uh, you know, the integrity issue comes in, mm -hmm. whether we should uh, <laughs> disclose the whole amount to the poor lady or we take something out of it. Wow. But at the end of the day, actually, uh, God was so, you know, uh, God was so uh, kind to me and to our chambers. And the, uh, the, you know, the peer of God touched our mind. Uh, we are able to hand over everything to the lady. And uh, thereafter, she gave us the commission that we agreed upon, which was 10% for the chambers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think that was a very serious integrity taste. Professor Zunarain admitted that a lot of thoughts of keeping the entire amount, since he was the only one privy to the existence of the reasonably fat bank account, came to his mind. It would surely have helped him establish a solid professional life. But, according to Professor Zunarain, God prevailed over the devil, and he and his team did the right thing. But uh, later, as uh, God will have it and uh, will be kind to us, were able to hand over everything to her without touching a dime out of it. And the woman cannot believe it. She was shouting, she was crying. Wow. You know, she couldn't believe it. And uh, I could not remember, you know, she knelt down praying for me. She even went to the, you know, church and do all sorts of <laughs> prayers for me. And I think those prayers were answered, actually. Mm -hmm. She gave me a plaque, mm -hmm. you know, this year from 1996, 97 to date. Mm -hmm. It is there in my bedroom. Professor Zunurain actually told the story that touched the heart concerning Mrs. Adepoju and her bereaved family. It is a pleasant trip down memory lane for Professor Zunurain and an experience with a great message. If you do the right thing, you feel happy, you feel fulfilled, you know, you feel that uh, you see uh, you have done the right thing and you live to cherish it. Exactly. But I believe if, you have, if we have gone the wrong way, yeah. It will keep on chasing us up to this point in time in life. So the issue of living and in a life of integrity, you know, living with values of integrity and honesty is to tell you that you are going to have a fulfilled life at the end of the day. You are not going to have anything that is going to, you know, traumatize you, keep on, you know, which hunting you saying that this is my past and I, I don't want to even remember it. But challenges are not restricted to temptation to hold back monies that would bring succor to a widow in distress. There are even more challenges within the educational setup which Professor Zunurain operates in. Only the grace of God has kept this paragon of integrity going. Actually, some people will come to will try to compromise you in order maybe to alter, to make to give them some academic favor, alter some marks, give them what they do not deserve you know, or change their position, and they can come with all sorts of offers. They offer, you know, they offer you money, they offer you money worth, and, uh, you know, in some cases, you know, lecturer student relationship, you find some even, you know, ladies may try to taint you with their bodies and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You need to really be a man of your, your principle of integrity, actually, to say no, mm -hmm. you know, and stamp your feet 
and maintain the right record. Mm. And we'll be glad that you did because there will be your ambassadors that will be telling all the good stories about you. And he attributes the ability to resist these many temptations to none but God. All the temptations are there, but uh, God in his mercy actually keep us, you know, uh, keep us, uh, uh, I, I can't say well about God, but keep us actually going, alhamdulillah. Mm. And uh, we are a little bit uh, not succumbing to the temptations. And Professor Zunarain is appreciated by some individuals who are close to him. Of course, if you ask me, I will tell you that uh, integrity is another name for Professor Usman uh, Muhammad Shaibu Zunurain. Kind of training he had right from home. Uh, to be honest with you, right from the days, our university days, he has always been a shiny example among the lecturers during our time. And he was a mentor and we always look upon to him that we can always confide on him. And uh, he was very committed, dedicated and devoted to his um, profession and he discharged his responsibilities diligently to the best of his ability. Professor Zunarain's life of example is likely to continue to attract endorsement from individuals who cherish a life of integrity. Malam Yabagi Alfa is the registrar of the College of Education in Niger State. He went to primary school in Kanu, Kaduna, and Katsina, all in Nigeria's northwest. Secondary school education, however, took him to Sokoto, from where he went to Zaria for tertiary instruction. He got appointed registrar on the 20th of February 2017. His character has come across over the years as one that labels him a man of truth and noble character generally. Malam Yabagi agrees that life has changed from the good old days of good for the sake of it to one where crookedness is fast becoming a fashion rather than an act to be frowned upon. He puts expression to his nostalgia. This is Nigeria because people were very honest at that time. Yeah. They felt that the best thing to do is to be honest. Uh, you find that at that time, people are not so much so concerned about the material that you get. Mm -hmm. What they are so much concerned with is what they are going to offer to the community, mm -hmm. and more so the honesty and integrity. And we read a lot about history. Mm -hmm. At that time, we find that our leaders at that time, people look at Namdi Azukwe, Sadono of Sokoto, Amino Kano, Tafawa Balewa, all those people, they are men of integrity. Yeah. They worked well for the country, and at the end of it, when they die, you find that they leave nothing but their name. He gives a rather pathetic explanation of the trend these days, using the family as an example. If you have wisdom but no money, you are not looked upon for decisions on family issues. Malam Yabagi says this has happened to him directly. Yes, it has happened in so many, so many occasions. Wow. People will say, I just leave, leave him alone, leave Malia Yabagi alone. If you call him, of course, he will tell you that uh, the, their, their type of life is different. <laughs> These are people who don't so much like money so much, but they know that that's not the case. Mm. What is the case is uh, honesty is better, because at the end of it, you find out that it is what people will come back to meet. Mm. So that is why I say now it's a little bit difficult, because even children, what they look at is they look at somebody who has acquired much. Yeah. They do not look at the background, how they acquired it. There's nothing wrong in acquiring money, but look at it. One must be very hardworking mm -hmm. before he acquires that. But mm -hmm. today, you find that the children of nowadays, that, that's not the case. The case for Malam Yabagi is that a good name is better than riches, while virtue rewards itself. He goes on to caution young people who want to make it by all means, that such a disposition usually leads to shortcuts. Shortcuts, he further says, usually lead to vice. Malam Yabagi explains why conflict with those who have an attitude towards life different from his is minimal. I am very, very much careful in choosing my pairs. Ah. This is very, very important. Okay. Uh, and therefore, I, I am a man that a little bit of reserve. I go with pairs who, are, of course, were of black minds. 
And then we move together like that way. And then you find out, uh, even from where I come out now, you find that that's what we discuss. We discuss issues like that. Mm. So when you have like minds, I think it is better that way. He offers advice to those who want to live a life of integrity. Nobody can be perfect, but then one should try as much as possible to live above board. So my advice was thought that we let them try as much as, um, as much as possible to live a life of integrity. Already it has started. You can see what is happening in Nigeria today. Yes. Those who have acquired much money at that time thinking that nothing will happen. Now something is happening. Yeah. So if people are really very sensible, let them reason very well that you might escape today, tomorrow you will not, you not, you not escape that. Mm. And I always say it is very important for people to know that the best thing in life is to make people happy. Not you. When you make people happy, then you'll be happy yourself. Noble words from a noble mind. Malam Yabagi says his wife and children are happily following the examples he has led. The family is reasonably calm and humble. A few comments on the personality of Malam Yabagi. I should go anywhere now. I'm kind of like, I want to do something. So they ask me, what's my name? I say, my name is Lema Yabagi. They kind of like asking me, which is first one? Once I say yes, the team will be like, no, seriously, come and do it first. You know, based on the way he's with people, his yeah. relationship with people. So anywhere I go, if I just mention sure his name, you know, I get things done fast. Everywhere I go, and I say, such a person is my dad. So people are like, come on, do you really mean it? I'm like, yes, I mean it. He's my dad. And then they all go like, oh, he's a nice man. He wants help. So, so person that I know, he did this, he did that. And then I'm like, okay, thank you for sharing. Because you know, the reward for good is only good. So when you do good, you see good. Malam Yabagi should take delight in the fact that his children know the gem that their father's character has translated into in public. My name is Mrs. Irene Anenye from Anambra State. Uh, born into a family of five, the first daughter of the third child, too. She bears the trademark simplicity of a nurse. Part of it is a smile that is as relevant to recovery by a patient as the medication from the doctor. The Abuja edifice of the Gurkhi General Hospital has seen only a few individuals with this lady's noble heart and character. Patients see hope when Mrs. Irene Aneye caters to their needs. Irene Aneye attended primary and secondary schools in Enugu. After that, she went into a profession after her heart, eventually qualifying for intensive care nursing. That's beside a degree in sociology. She's currently head of nursing services at the Gurki Hospital, Abuja. Aneye is an icon in human care, one that brings a conscientious attitude into her job. What's her understanding of integrity? I believe that uh, integrity, what exactly it means to me, it's be yourself at any time, the top of your profession giving out your best, putting yourself in that shoe, what you expect others to do to you. I believe that's what it means to me. Mm. Being at the top of your game, doing it right, being positive, being in a, a, a situation where others would like to learn the good aspect of you. Be yourself and be truthful. Mrs. Aneye has surely listed virtues that are not going to be acquired and exhibited with the drop of a hat. They require a will since they would bring about challenges. How is she handling that? There are many storms. There are many. Nursing profession is a profession that has a lot of people working as a team. And being you, the one only they were very close to the patient. You face a lot, both from patient relations, 
from patient itself and from other professionals. Where I mean the doctors, the pharmacists, the lab technician, lab technology, every bit of it, you are the center. So it takes the grace of God for you to be able to put this teamwork that all of them will believe in you. And where the integrity comes in is, it's a profession that people want you to shortcut so many things. Really? Yes, yes. Especially where some things are going on wrong because of what people may say, because of what the profession may face or the hospital itself may face. How has she been able to withstand the resultant pressure? Has any of these ever got her close to having her job threatened? Well, I, I would like to start giving his speech. I am an intensivist, as I said, intensive care nursing. Where a patient is being rushed in. People expect you to call in the doctor mm. first. Mm. And you, the, the training I have, I need to save that life. Mm. I need to save that life rather than waiting for a doctor. Mm. That is one thing some of them don't like. They don't. They see that uh, you're going out of that work called nursing. And that was why I went to do intensive care, where you have the permission to go extra mile in order to save a life. There are cases they may rush in, you need to intubate a patient, you need to do certain things. Knowing that in the next five minutes, that patient can lose that patient. But what it takes is that you know what you're doing, you go and save that life and get that person back. You damn any other consequences. Mrs. Aneye says there are instances where she disagrees with prescriptions she might consider as potentially harmful to the patient. She would decline administering such prescriptions with good reasons to back up her stance. Obviously, Mrs. Aneye's experience as an intensivist is a huge plus for her unit at the hospital. Mrs. Aneye says her family has been a major influence on her professional disposition. She comes from a Christian background that taught her the place of faith in God and faith in her fellow man. There's that teaching. Be steadfast. Be straightforward. Always say the truth. It will take you a long way. And being a Catholic in our profession, in our, in our lives, the catechism we had then had a great modeling in our lives. You go to church, there are certain things you do. They will tell you go for your confession. There are things that may be forgiven, knowing that you don't know anything. But there are things, if you truly know this is wrong and you go and do it, you need to, you need to call on your reverend father and explain. Some of these things modeled our lives. She says young people should not join those individuals they can't beat in unscrupulous endeavors. Rather, they should stick to the courage of their convictions on the platform of integrity. Some of the young ones now believe it's the money. You came into this profession not because you want to be a nurse, but you believe that what, once you're a nurse, you are being paid well. The in thing now is the issue of abroad. Everybody yeah. wants to go out of the country. Yeah. But they forget that you can't mess up there. Yeah. So if you don't start now, if you don't start in this country to do the right thing, even if you go there, you can't fit in. So many have gone. We've gotten reports. Two weeks, they are thrown out of yeah. the hospital. Yes. They end up, they won't tell you because they are ashamed coming back home. But you see that some of them I've met, if you are travel, I know more in nursing. They will tell you the story. But somehow, I couldn't meet up. But if you see the good ones, who really know what it is? Having the background, having the top root here, they are doing excellently well. But how do others see Irene Aneye? We've been taught right from the one that good name and a good character is better than money, gold, 
you have your pick of whatever the other option is. You have to keep yourself on the right path. You have to um, show good character, show good morals, keep your integrity and your name straight. That's what I've been taught since I can remember. She understands when there is a patient who is in difficulty, who is a complex patient, and my request in terms of what needs to be done for that patient, she actually understands. And the issue of actually responding appropriately and responding in a timely manner, she totally understands. That. The President, Federation of Muslim Women's Associations in Nigeria, Form 1, Hajia Halima Jibril, has everything it takes to be called an honest woman, known for her exemplary integrity. Born into the royal family of Patagi in Niger State, the former director of program services in Niger State Broadcasting Service was raised in a communal setting that ensured a homely attitude towards others in her environment. She says her father brought her and her siblings up, 23 of them in all, to respect virtues that are threatened in present-day living. Hers was a father who gave equal attention to the boys as well as the girls in the family. Hajia Halima recalls an instance when her father cautioned her when she came third in her class examination at Missionary Secondary School in Bidda. It never happened again. She led her class for the rest of her secondary education and actually made grade one in the school certificate examination a record in the school. What is her definition of integrity? A life of honesty, mm. consistency in upholding the values of honesty, accountability, hard work, you know, and being good to others. Hajia Halima considers that there is no alternative to a life of integrity and goes on to list some of the challenges she has faced in the pursuit of a life worthy of emulation. For instance, when I was a civil servant and um, my principle is zero tolerance for corruption. I will not inflate prizes for anything I will not allow myself to be used to do anything like that. To the extent that even though I was a senior member of the management, sometimes I will be sidelined. <laughs> yes, I will be sidelined because, uh, because I, they know uh, I, I will not um, budge. Yeah. Two, I'm also uh, a believer in merit. I don't believe in mediocrity. Mm. If there's a job to be done, get the best qualified person to do it. So uh, in my department, you will not offer me a substandard, you know, staff for a job because I know I will not be getting results. And I cannot live with that. Mm. So I will not allow it. In a situation where the question is not if there will be an abuse of process and standards, but the volume of the infraction that would happen, Hajia Halima must have faced an uphill task. She recalls a specific instance when she was head of programs at the former Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria in Mina. In fighting corruption, <laughs> I, I have lost some money because I refused to give bribes. Yes, I, I did some work somewhere and because I'm not playing ball. I, I, in fact, I had to come out openly to say, look, uh, as a civil servant, I, I never concord to issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. 
now in my old age, it's not the time to ask me, you know, to take part in um, corrupt, corruption, practices. corrupt practices. So it's either you allow me to continue with the work or you take your job and I go back home. Meeting Hajia Halima is an experience worth preserving. One of the ways that happens is getting her to advise young persons, in particular, on how to stay focused and lead a life they would be proud of. It's important to know that money is not everything. In fact, integrity can buy you much more than money can buy for you. I have been at several jobs. I have been all over the world. I have traveled extensively, not with my Naira and Kobo, but as a result of integrity. Uh, I have come across people who, after uh, uh, several years after I have left office, once they meet me, you know, they will remind me about what in the way in which I touch their lives. Most of these things I myself I have forgotten, but because it lives in the hearts of others, that goes a long way to tell you that integrity pays. Money is not everything. Sometimes you wake up um, without money, but because you have faith, God supports you. Hajia Halima has friends who eagerly comment on her character. She is a very upright lady. She is very principled. She is very humble and very honest. Uh, hardly would any person come in contact with her that uh, she will not positively influence and impart on that person. She is a woman of integrity. She is one person, if she tells you yes, she will stand by the yes. If it's no, she will stand by that no. Through thick, through thin. Hajia Halima has obviously been living a quiet but highly noticeable life of integrity. Many persons have received her impact. She is still doing more to raise the Human Development Index in her own way.